Great. And our, our um, the next speaker is uh, Mansi Wu, who is an assistant professor from Cornell University from the Operations uh, Research and in Information Engineering. And so Mansi studies the uh, role of you know platforms for information provisioning and uh, autonomous services in the transportation networks. And uh, so so she's in interested in uh, you know the design of you know information flow and incentive guidelines. And she'll talk to us about some of the very interesting work she's done on congestion games, which includes you know game theory, incentive design, network optimization. So uh, without uh, further delay, let's see how we can. Uh... Okay. okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Rahul, for the introduction and invitation. And thanks, everyone, for being here. Um, I'm going to talk about multi-agent reinforcement learning in Markov games and beyond. And this is joint work with my, this is joint work with my wonderful collaborators that include um, Professor Shankar Sastry and Professor Xinguo from UC Berkeley ECS and IEOR department, and three PhD students, uh, Qingmei, Zhu, and Xingyu, also from Berkeley ECS and um, OR department. Okay, just a very brief motivation since I guess all of the audience are experts in this area. I don't need to say too much that we often are in a situation that in order to model the societal scale systems, we need to account for the dynamic environment as well as the humans in the loop that are strategic, that are, that are utility maximizers. And one common way to model such interaction is through the stochastic game framework that captures the both aspects and try to model and keep track of the evolution of agents, actions, and system states. There are a couple of challenges here. The first is that oftentimes there is limited information and communication environment. This includes but not limited to that agents may not know the payoff function or lack of the oracle of computing and extracting the gradient information. They may not be able to observe the opponent's strategies and payoffs. And in some uh, scenarios, actually in many um, application scenarios, agents do not even know that they are playing a game because the opponents are so many and the situation is very complex, they're not able to process that information. On the other hand, the computation complexity of equilibrium is also uh, make it very difficult to compute in practically relevant scenario. In most of the games, um, Computing equilibrium is a really challenging task, um, except for maybe uh, two cases that is zero sum or potential games. However, many practically relevant scenarios are often not uh, fall into either one of the categories. So we try to address um, these two challenges in our uh, two seminal papers. The first one, uh, which is the first part of the talk, I want to talk about a very simple idea of extending single agent actor critic algorithm to multi-agent setting and show that it can provably converge um, in an independent and decentralized manner in Markov potential games. And in the second half of the talk, which I think I will be very brief about it, is that um, Markov potential game is too restrictive. So how can we go beyond that framework? In this part, uh, we are going to propose a new Markov near potential game framework that goes beyond it and try to see how the Nash regret analysis and algorithm convergence gracefully um, extends uh, when something is off in terms of uh, it, the existence of a potential function. Okay, so for the related literature, it's adding, um, it's building on and contribute to the rich literature that are fastly evolving uh, in the Markov potential game as well as zero sum Markov potential game, uh, zero sum Markov games, and also the classical um, algorithms in uh, reinforcement learning and uh, learning in static games. Okay, so let's jump right into the first half. So just to introduce the notation, we consider a finite set of players, finite set of states, um, action states, uh, utility is a mapping from the state and action, uh, and the state transition has a matrix. So, and it's a discounted setting, okay? Um, we consider only stationary policy, which means the policy is not time invariant. It tells you what's the probability of playing an action given a particular state. And the, ut um, the utility of player is the accumulated value function that it takes the discounted 
factor, and both the state and the action profile realization given a policy is a Markov chain. Okay. We say that a policy profile is a stationary Nash equilibrium if given the policy of the rest of the agents, there is no incentive of uh, deviating from this policy. And we say this is absolute Nash equilibrium if the improvement for any such deviation is limited uh, below epsilon, which is a small number. Um, so for the first half of the talk, I'm going to focus on Markov potential game, which assumes that there exists a state-dependent potential function that exactly captures uh, very precisely how the uh, change of the deviator's utility when the deviator changes the policy. So in some sense, this uh, potential function itself serves as a Lyapunov function, as we will show later, that captures the global information of whether agents have incentive to deviate or not. When the potential function is known, which is very rare, uh, re rarely happens, uh, you can compute uh, the Nash equilibrium as the maximizer of the potential function. Um, and the related literature is included together in that one slide. Uh, the challenge is that oftentimes you don't really know the potential function and most of the games are not potential games. So we show that if each agent uh, independently and without any coordinating, coordination to run a uh, actor critic algorithm, then it will converge to stationary Nash equilibrium. Um, this captures this independent and decentralized learning environment where only the banded payoff feedback is known and it doesn't rely on any knowledge of the game or knowledge of other agents. So no coordination. Um, the simple idea is that you use a fast time scale to run the perturbed Q learning and then you have a slow time scale, which captures this perturbed best response that captures that agents um, uh, simply wants to improve their strategy for one stage and in a strategic manner. So we allow for asynchronous learning rate, which means agents do not coordinate on how fast they learn. Um, the algorithm keeps track of a couple of items. Uh, first is the state count, how many times a stage, a state S is being realized, and state action count. So it, agents will independently keep track of how many actions, um, how many times a particular action has been played when a particular state has shown up. So both the state count and state action count can be independently done by the agents themselves. And then they have an estimate of the perturbed Q function, and they have a policy pipe. So how do they update? How do they update their um, policy? So state count is just going to be updated when it is realized, but they update their perturbed Q estimate. Um, here the key aspect is that um, I have a perturbation uh, to so so that I do not need to know about uh, I do not need to know about the game structure, but through the perturbation I penalize on the actions that I have not played. So it increases my chance of playing it. Um, and then I incorporate, each agent would incorporate simply uh, what has been the reward in the last round, their own reward. And then I update the policy uh, using also, um, I'm not able to, um, it's okay, I think. I think it's okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh, great, thank you. Uh, here it's a smooth logic choice uh, given the estimated Q function. Oops. Oh. Um, so here the action, the, the step sizes of both updates depends on the local counter on the state and action profile. And this update um, step size can be agent independent. So it's specifically uh, subscripted uh, with the agent I. And also, of course, the second counter, which is the state action tuple, only the agent themselves will know. Okay. So we assume, um, the first assumption would assume that uh, the Markov chain is irreducible and apurotic. Second assumption is a standard assumption, um, assuming that the step sizes um, are roughly at the same time scale, although heterogeneous, and also the Q learning is faster than the policy learning. Okay, and under these two assumptions, uh, we show that 
the learning dynamics would converge to an epsilon dash equilibrium of the Markov potential game with probability one. So this simply just saying that when all agents run actual critic, it converges to equilibrium. Um, and here, this epsilon depends on the regularizer of the updates. And this is the relationship between epsilon and the regularizer. So you can also tune the regularizer down and then to get your equilibrium closer to the exact equilibrium. I'm going to fly through the step sizes, uh, the proof steps. Basically, we first used a, an asynchronous stochastic approximation scheme. And then we find um, that the fast dynamics is a Q learning that converges. So eventually, instead of this estimate, frequentist estimate of the Q function, you are able to estimate precisely this Q value function. And the third step is showing that there exists a uh, Lyapunov function. Although the proof of the Lyapunov function does need to involve a couple of items, including the policy gradient theorem of the perturbed game, uh, multi-agent performance difference lemma, as well as the variation inequality, uh, that is the game component. And the last part is to show that based on all these ingredients, we can show that a perturbed equilibrium converges given the perturbation parameter, and the game um, has a continuous property that this perturbed game equilibrium is actually epsilon equilibrium of the original game. Okay. So now, since at the beginning I have criticized this uh, Markov potential game of saying that it is a little bit uh, restrictive, how can we go beyond that? So the, the reason that we think of this is because we are inspired by the previous work, um, both the static congestion game, um, as well as some of the empirical study of Markov congestion game. So congestion game, says that uh, in a static setting, there is a set of agents using resources. And the key aspect is that the reward of resource does not depend on exactly who is using what resource, but only depends on the aggregate usage of these resources. So it has it is widely applicable, including in traffic routing, cost sharing, as well as communication networks. Well, static congestion game uh, is a potential game. And this is maybe why potential uh, game, static potential game has been uh, studied so well that it allows us to compute no matter how large the system is, we are able to compute a pure Nash equilibrium by maximizing this potential function. So as a result, many learning algorithms in the static setting would converge in congestion game. Okay. However, things are totally different for Markov congestion game. If we think about infinitely repeatedly play a static congestion game, uh, for example, the network has a stochastic state that evolves, uh, not that evolves, and the uh, state transition matrix is actually uh, a function of the aggregate usage of these um, resources. So this is a natural extension of static congestion game to the Markov setting when a state uh, is stochastic. The end agents are trying to maximize their long run packet utility. This could include also traffic routing, but think about multi, multi round interaction as well as the changing network state, as well as some of the networked market game where the market state could evolve based on what has been purchased and what resources has been allocated in the previous round. However, Markov congestion game is not obviously, uh, in general cases, not obviously a Markov potential game. And this is the example from the first paper that produced, uh, that proposed the Markov potential game. The checking and verification of MPG is, is, is quite a challenging task. And this simple example shows that um, the previous Markov congestion game uh, function cannot, uh, sorry, the previous static congestion game function cannot just be naturally extended here. So we want to go a little bit more general and generalize this, this exact capturing the utility deviation by saying that, okay, we just find a potential function such that the deviator's utility and the difference of the change of the potential function value is bounded by some number alpha. And when such a game exists, uh, when such a function exists, we are going to say that this is an alpha potential game. And when alpha is zero, it becomes a Markov potential gap. So if we construct such a function, the alpha could be large. And in that case, 
this becomes uh, less accurate in approximating your equilibrium. But by doing this, you can actually uh, solve at least one alpha stationary Nash equilibrium that gives you some kind of theoretical guarantee. This generalizes the previous literature um, by um, Kandogan, Ostagler, and Parillo on the static gamma decomposition and the static near potential gamma literature. So I'm going to fly through the rest of the slides because I don't have enough time. But basically, essentially, we show that in Markov congestion game, when the individual agent's impact becomes very small, the market power of individual becomes less, and your uh, state transition matrix is Lipschitz in the usage aggregate usage vector, then as the number of agents goes to infinity, this alpha goes to zero. And this means that a decentralized learning algorithm uh, represented in, in part one of the uh, uh, actor critic algorithm can be used for solving this kind of um, anonymous interaction, which presents not only in traffic routing, but also in a lot of the robotic setting to use it to actually efficiently find um, a good enough solution. And this is maybe why a lot of the individual RL algorithm has already been deployed in training the larger scale um, autonomous systems. So the rest of the results of this paper um, includes, we propose a new algorithm called sequential maximum improvement. Uh, that is very simple. You have an agent to only one agent doing the update and this agent is only updating the uh, policy for the realized state and that achieves the maximum improvement so this is an algorithm we find um, to be a natural generalization of the sequential best response in the Markov setting, but you do not, you are not required to compute the entire RL policy update for the single agent. It's a uh, uh, simply this uh, logit update. So this builds on the previous actor critic algorithm, and we showed this uh, Nash regret analysis and how the Nash regret scales with respect to the number of agents, the size of the actions as well as uh, the alpha. So the alpha um, that captures the gap between the scam and a potential gap. And then we also looked into this uh, widely uh, studied projected gradient as an algorithm and find how the natural regret bound would scale again with respect to alpha. So the bound will uh, go to the original bound of the literature when alpha becomes zero. Okay, and this is the simulation study for Markov congestion game with eight agents and four facilities. Concluding remark. In the first half of the talk, we propose an independent and decentralized learning dynamics and show that it converges to Markov potential game. And with example, we show that we motivate the importance of going beyond Markov potential game to look at the case when it is near. And then we propose uh, a new algorithm and find its natural regret we also analyze the Nash regret of an existing algorithm. Um, the future direction of research includes thinking about efficient learning algorithm in scenarios, in especially OR related scenarios, where there are block structure or special structure um, of the agent's behavior. And the papers are, are, are on archive, and thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering, so given you say that it is very hard to verify what the game is about, but what is the game for a general game? How can we compute uh, near enough hard to verify? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. We just got the result last week, and we we are going to update the archive to include this maybe next week. So uh, you can find this by formulating a semi-infinite linear program. And there is a sampling algorithm um, that gives you the trade-off between computation and precision uh, that you run this algorithm and you can find the closest the potential function as well as the gap. So if you um, think it's a fully polynomial time approximation algorithm. Yeah, thank you. Yes, please. Uh huh. Um, 
I haven't thought about that. Uh, I think in the first half, I, I believe people have already done that or are doing it for the exact potential function or in cooperative setting, then definitely people have done that. Uh, so then I think actor critique could generalize by using some of the ideas there. For the second part, um, I do not know. I think big things becomes complex. Thank you. Let's give him yeah. Thank you very much. That was a great talk. Uh, so, so this um, concludes our our morning session, and I'll just give you the plan for the rest of the uh, the afternoon. Then, uh, so so we will. Uh, so so following uh, this, we will we will be back uh, maybe uh, just two minutes before eleven o'clock we have about half an hour a little bit more than half an hour for a coffee break so we can have a good discussions there too and so then we will basically go bang 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 with uh, six uh, very quick uh, contributed papers so i ask all those speakers to come and sit up front uh, in the next session and uh, following that after we'll have a lunch break and then we'll get into our invited session number two uh, with uh, uh, our, our distinguished uh, invited speakers over there. All right, so enjoy your coffee break and we'll see you just a, a minute or two before 11. Thank you. <laughs>